Hey folks, so it's probably just going to be a quickie today. Um, got something in the mail, kind of want to play with. Uh, this isn't this isn't sponsored or anything, it was just a project that crossed my radar and I thought it was pretty neat. Um, I am a fan of e-paper, I'm a fan of open source, I'm a fan of Arduino, I'm a fan of smart watches, I'm a fan of regular watches for that matter, I haven't been wearing mine um, for reasons. Uh, but anyway, decided to back the project and uh, finally came in the mail a few weeks ago. Haven't had really had time to play with it, but I don't know. I guess I can do an unboxing of sorts and uh, give you my opinion. I'm not I'm not real hip on that whole uh, smartwatch scene. Uh, I am more a regular watch kind of person. In fact, I prefer mechanical watches. I like the tick, 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 tick. But anyway, that's that's a separate hobby of mine that I decided not to uh, delve too deeply in because it's not a cheap hobby. <laughs> the other watch I normally have, if you watch some of my older videos, um, it is a Vostok Amphibia. And... I, I take it off when I shower, as one does, and I set it down, and one thing led to another, and I lost it. Uh, I'm guessing I set it down somewhere. My cat decided it was uh, a toy, and he batted it away, and then by the time I got out of my shower, I totally forgot about it because it wasn't where I left it, and months went by. <laughs> I did miss it. But the only time I ever thought about doing something about it was when I was not in a position to do something about it. So anyway, this has arrived. This is excellent. Um, I dig the packaging. I think it's, I think it's pretty cool that they put the, um, the instructions on how to assemble it just straight up into the packaging. That's, that's real clever use. Uh, also, I decided to back the, um, pay for the extra. CNC machined case because I don't know if you guys are aware but I am I'm a fan of CNC machined things but I don't know I just thought it was neat it's pretty easy to talk me into backing an open source project especially when they already have basically everything published you know you're just paying for an actual physical device instead of getting it made yourself but yeah anyway does this have yeah okay so in here you got the case front case back the buttons the actual screen itself because this is an e-ink and you can see that they did test it it retains the exact same screen data that it had when they tested it, this isn't like a screen protector or anything, that's just that's just what the screen is going to display until we plug it into something and get new data. This is the actual device itself. They got watch all over it. One thing that did bum me out was the use of micro USB instead of USB-C. It's not that egregious, but in 2021, it yeah it's not the it's not the best but anyway let's see if we can get this out put it together I am almost definitely gonna swap out bands I don't really jive with that silicon band uh, we'll set that aside so obviously I'm gonna use the machined one That's neat. Comes with like a tempered glass screen protector that we are going to install afterwards because that is a perfect fit. So if I get it misaligned, we're going to have problems. This. Oh, let's try not to destroy that. I'm guessing this is just to stick that down to here. Why don't we reference the instructions? So the instructions say, 
stick that down. Mine appears to be already stuck down. We gotta plug in the battery. And then yeah, we stick the uh, screen down and then, yep, there it is. It says to install that afterwards. That's easy enough. Very straightforward. So I am going to jam the adhesive onto the back of the screen. I have already opened this, if you couldn't tell from my masking tape on the box, but I haven't actually assembled this and played with it yet. I'm going to wipe that off just in case. I don't expect that all my fingerprints will show through, but it's something that I won't be able to clean afterwards, so... And then of course I'll have to clean the front, but whatever. No idea what sort of software this thing uses. Oh, that is real slick. I like the uh, alignment on everything. I have no doubt in my mind that I can just stick that down right there and I won't have any problems, but I'm going to double check. Because my PCB needs a hair of touch up. So when these PCBs are made, they're uh, they're all assembled out onto a panel, kind of like this. So you get the the whole plate of PCBs, whatever size it is. Uh, depending on who you get it manufactured through, uh, you know, you might have just multiples of your PCB on the panel, depending on how many you're getting, which this was a somewhat large order, so I suspect that's how it went. Or, you know, if you're ordering through like Osh Park, you might have your PCB here, another person's PCB here, so on and so forth. But anyway, it's done on this big panel that is then broken apart. You can see these little connections running between the uh, panel material and then the actual printed circuit board and usually you just you know break it apart and pop it off and you're good to go um, if you order PCBs from Osh Park you usually see you know these little artifacts on it that's the exact same thing those are just the connections that Osh Park uses to the PCB most PCB fabs like JLC PCB or like PCB way in my experience, they will machine those tabs off for you, and I have no idea where this in particular was made, but you can see there's just a remainder of a tab, and it is causing a fitment issue because the tolerances are extremely tight. So I am just going to take my file, should have used a clean file, huh? I'm just going to take my file and rub that down until it's flat. Now in some products, I would consider the fact that you need to file the PCB. A pretty serious con but given the fact that this is um, this is more of like a DIY tinkerer toy I think that is such a foolish complaint for something like this 
so I certainly don't mind. And it barely fits. It's tight, but at least it fits now. I love them tolerances. I do, anyway. Okay, well, let's pop the screen back in. I've dabbled with the uh, manufacturing side of something like this pretty recently. Um, I know this is pretty far outside my regular content, so for full context, I have been working on getting this thing made. It's a custom Game Boy Advance SP. Um, so I am... I don't want to delve too deeply into that because that's not the point of this video, but the point of that, what I was trying to say, is um, I'm fully aware how difficult it can be to get the tolerances right. That is, that is probably one of the most difficult things when it comes to manufacturing. Tolerances. Oh, tolerances suck. Because the problem is... You get them too tight, and you can't even assemble the jeezless thing. You get them too loose, and then you, you know, maybe you can assemble it, but it doesn't, doesn't work very well. All right, so I just stuck that down. After doing the test fit, I determined that the placement doesn't matter too much as long as it clears this hole and this hole mostly entirely. We don't. We don't have to worry about the uh, ribbon cable so much. We just want to make sure it's not going to get anywhere in the way of the edges because that's where the screws go through and we don't want to pinch the screen with screws or something like that. Clean up all my fingerprints. But anyway, yeah, tolerances, it's uh very difficult so like you can see I'm trying to jam this in here and it's getting hung up this is something that takes a tremendous amount of experience to get right but that thing's looking sick so far I did just clean the screen so I'm gonna drop this on It's not perfectly stuck down yet, but we'll worry about that later. Now, we just need a battery. I think this is the same connector that we use for the Game Boy Micro batteries. Sorry, unrelated, just can't help myself. Yep. Oh, I like that cutout for the battery. That's slick. I mean, I guess it makes sense. You've got the cutout for the straps on the opposite side, so... Anyway. It is alive, it is awoken. That'll go together just like that, but we need some buttons. And we need some screws. So it, they gave you adhesive for the battery. I'm gonna not use it because the battery already seems pretty snug. And I like the idea of being able to take this thing apart easily. So I just don't want to... Uh, I don't want to do that. I have taken apart plenty of devices with 
glued down batteries, it is never fun. Boom. The machined one comes with screws and an Allen wrench. Probably swap out these screws. Not that they're bad, I just I have a lot of screws, and I think I have some that look a little bit cooler. I gotta see if my uh, Torx ones will fit. Actually, you know what, before, let's just try it out. So these look like M2, and I have a crap load of M2 screws, so let's find out. See why they wouldn't be M2. That is not the same. Yeah, that's that's M2. That wouldn't go in if it wasn't. But Heck, even those look better. Nice and flush. I've got a uh, black one somewhere. Potentially on the way, though. So yeah, M2. In the off chance you get one of these things and want to experiment with your own screws. All right. So now I either have to go look up instructions or figure this out on my own. I'm thinking I'm going to have to go look up instructions. I wonder if there's a way you could just like plug it in and set it up on the computer. That would be convenient, wouldn't it? But, there you go. I mean, it's super light. Very small battery. Aluminum is pretty uh, light as far as materials go. I have this backwards? I guess so. It's weird. I suppose it doesn't matter too greatly. But yeah, I think my Vostok is heavier than this thing, so... Not too surprising. Oh, I did it again. No, it's not backwards, it's just this thing. Okay, I'm backwards. We gotta put it in like this.
There we go. I'm just doing it wrong. User. I still don't like the strap. That's not a comment on the straps quality. I just don't like silicone straps. But, ta-da! That's it. I'm gonna go play with it now. Um, I will probably add some updates, like my thoughts on this thing. It's pretty cool. Uh, obviously, I think it's a very easy build. Uh, even for someone not so technically minded, the um, most difficult part would probably be having to file down the PCB if yours has that same issue that mine did. Um, and uh, just for just for context, the plastic injection molded case, yes, actually injection molded, not 3D printed. That was one of the Man, I was stoked when I found out it was plastic injection molded, and then I found out there was a CNC aluminum option, and I'm like, oh man, but two cool options. I don't know what to go with. Uh, but anyway, yeah, it's pretty neat, but different styling, um, probably a little bit more compact than the machined aluminum version, but mostly because it just has that curve on the front, and it doesn't have these screws sticking out, but it's still cool, either way. I like it. I'm digging it. I think this will show up in quite a few future videos. Make a guest appearance. Oh, and we could use the uh, plastic buttons with the metal case. I can't imagine these are different mold. Nope. Same thing. But I'm going to leave that all in there. Injection molded Yatari case. Yeah. I don't know. Pretty cool. I will throw a link to this thing. I'll throw a link to the... Um, I believe they have a GitHub repository or they have a whole website set up. I don't recall. But I'll find a link. I'll throw it in the description. And if you can still purchase one of these things, I'll throw a link to that as well. Um, otherwise, I will... By the time I get this video uploaded, I'll have a better opinion on this thing as far as actually using it as a watch goes, and I'll throw that in the description too. Uh, but otherwise, I, I feel I've already gotten my money's worth out of it. This, this thing was only like 60 bucks, and this is pretty cool. Assuming it actually holds time well and the battery life is pretty decent, I think I am going to thoroughly enjoy using this thing. Uh, we're definitely going to have to figure out what specifically that temperature is and why it's displaying 43 degrees Celsius because it's a lot closer to low 20s in here. Um, obviously the year and date is wrong. I don't know how to set it. There's probably, oh, there we go. Yeah. I know the vibrating motor works, but yeah, I'm gonna play with this more off camera because uh, I have a overwhelming suspicion that there is a firmware update and that updating the firmware is going to reset everything anyway so I'm gonna do that um, that is an incredibly neat feature I like that um, but yeah thanks for watching guys I know it was a little bit different than my usual video uh, but I buy neat things every now and then. I like to show off neat things. So, yeah. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic day.